Hello, everyone. Welcome to Technologies Discussion Channel. Today, I'd like to continue the discussion on parameters. On my previous video, I actually discussed about Z or impedance parameters. For this video, okay, I'm going to discuss on Y and also known as emittance parameters specifically for two port network. This will be the part two series discussion on parameters like what I mentioned earlier on. Part one, I have done the Z or the impedance parameters. I will also do the S parameters, A, B, C, D parameters, etc. Okay, so if you can, okay, so please take a look on those video under the playlist in order to fully understand the discussion on parameters. This is my email. If you have any question regards on today's discussion, please drop me an email. Before I continue, I'd like to urge you guys to support this channel by pressing the like and also the subscribe button. Please also turn on your notification bell in order to receive more information from this channel. Guys, feel free to give me comment so that the quality of this channel can be further improved. Once again, sincere thanks for your strong support. Okay, before I start on why or emittance parameters, okay, let's do a very quick discussion on two port network. Okay, a two port network they basically has both input and output ports. Typically, input will be on your left and output will be on your right. Okay, where there is both a voltage and a current at each port. Okay, which means that at the input I have a voltage and current source. While at the output, I also have the voltage and current. We can represent each port as a turbine or northern as shown below. Okay, so over here you can see that I can actually represent these two port network okay, either by turbine rules or northern rule based on the requirement. Okay, a turbine circuit has I as the independent variable and V as the dependable variable. Okay, which means that for a turbine circuit, okay, the I will be independent. They don't depend on anything. While V, okay, which is the voltage, they de actually depends on I. While a northern circuit has the reverse, V basically will become the independent variable and I become a dependable variable, which means that I actually depends on V for northern circuit. Why parameters of two port network are also called emittance parameters, which I have also illustrated. Okay, so later on you will see why. Okay, because they are actually has the SI unit which called Siemens, okay, which is the one over impedance okay, or one over ohms, which is called Siemens. Okay, these are obtained by express current in terms of voltage. Okay, you can see over here, you can see that current is actually a function of voltage. Can you see here? All the current I1 or I2 basically is a function of V1 and V2. So this is what it means over here. Pass voltage V1 and V2 are independent variable, okay, which means that there is no dependency on this V1 and V2, while I1 and I2 actually depend on V1 and V2 as illustrated here. Okay, in this case, okay, the relationship between the port voltage, port current, and the Y parameters metric is given by here. Okay, so this is what I have mentioned earlier on. Okay, you can see from here, this is basically what we call the Y or the emittance parameters. Okay, over here again, I can uh, open up the matrix I1. Okay, basically equals to Y11 multiplied by V1, which is shown here, and then plus Y12 multiplied by V2, okay, which is shown over here. I2. Okay, for example, for this case, will be V2 multiplied by V1 plus Y22 multiplied by V2, which is further described here. So from here, you can also simplify. Okay, basically, all these are all I, okay, which is the current. These are all the Y parameters or emittance parameters. And over here will be the voltage. So you know that in this form, they actually represent a Y or emittance parameters. The Z and Y matrix, they are actually inverse of each other. So as I told you earlier on, 
okay, emittance and impedance is actually have the relationship of inverse proportional, okay, which means that one over. So over here, it also represents on the matrix way, they are actually inverse of each other. Why parameters is defined individually only when the voltage in any one of the pop is zero, okay, which means that one of the voltage will be equal to zero, okay, which I'm going to illustrate on the next slides. Okay, but keep this in mind here. This correspond to the condition that one of the port is short circuit. Okay, so therefore, for example, here I probably can short circuit V2 here or short circuit V1 here. So therefore, hence Y parameters is also called short circuit emittance parameters. Okay, so I'm going to explain this on the next slides. Okay, so this is what I mentioned earlier on. Okay, so this, this is actually on the Y parameters here. So over here, this is Y11. Okay, Y11 is actually I1 over V1, while V2 is equal to zero. Okay, so if you take a look over here, so basically how to find Y1 is basically, as you can see from here, is actually I1 over V1, which is the inverse relationship. Okay, so basically from here you can see, and I actually has a short circuit at V2, which is illustrated here. Same as for the rest, okay, but I just want to quickly explain this equivalent circuit. So over here, how can I actually find Y11? So can you see here, Y11 is actually I1 over V1, while over here, this V2 becomes zero, so nothing actually contribute over here. So therefore, I can easily find my Y11 over here. Okay, so next, we talk about Y12. Okay, how can I actually find my Y12? Okay, over here, this V1 is equal to zero, okay, which means that this is equal to zero. So therefore, I know that I1, which is equals to Y12, V2. Okay, because current, basically, if I have so-called a short circuit here, okay, all the current will only flow this path. So therefore, over here, I can find my Y12, okay, which is I1 over V2. Okay? So same as Y21 here. So basically, how to find my Y21? Okay, again, this V2 okay, basically will be short circuit. So from here, I can assume that all the current will be flowing here. Okay, so over here, I will be able to find my Y21. Okay, so Y21 is simply I2 over V1. So you can imagine here, I2 equals to Y21 over V1. So Y21 is simply just I2 over V1, which is illustrated here. Same as Y22. Okay, so again, when V1 is equal to 0, this is equal to 0. So V2 is simply I2 divided by V2, which is illustrated here. Okay, so this is basically a quick so-called ways to find the Y parameters or evidence parameters. Okay, so instead by word, okay, let me work up an example so that you can fully understand okay, the Y or the evidence parameters of this. Okay, for example, for this case here, I need to de determine the Y or emittance parameters of this Pi network show below here. Okay, so this is what we have shown it earlier on. Okay, so which is over here, the relationship, okay, which I put it over here for reference easily. Okay, there are actually lots of way to find the Y or emittance parameters. Okay, for example, okay, you can actually implement the Z parameters. Okay, how I done on the Z parameters. Okay, on that particular video, you can also use this technique to find the emittance or Y parameters. And finally, after you have find all the Z parameters, you just need to do one divide, all the stuff, and you will actually be able to obtain the Y or emittance parameters. But for this particular example, I actually adopt another way so that you have another alternative way to find either the Z or the emittance parameters, which can be also used later on on the Z parameters also. So therefore, this example, I purposely use another techniques so that we are able to use another way to counter check our answer whether they are all correct or not. So let's take a look on this another way. Basically, what I plan to do is basically I apply this Kirchhoff current law at this node number one. Okay, you can see that the current flow in here and they basically they flow out here. So from here, I know that this is I1 equals to the current plus another current here. So these two current is equals to I1, which I put it over here. So this is I1. So I know that this V1 over 2, the current, okay, 
and then plus this current that flow over here. So over here, this will be the voltage V1, correct? And over here, this will be the voltage V2, correct? So basically, if the current flow this way, okay, I will take V1 minus V2 divided by the resistor value, which I have done it over here. Can you see here again? So firstly, I actually use this Kirchhoff current law. Okay, so this is I1. Okay, so I know that this I1 will be the current at this current and at this current will give me I1 okay, because of Kirchhoff current law. Therefore, I have this I1. How to find the current here is simply use the voltage divided by the resistor, which is V1 over 2. And over here, okay, in order to know the current here, because over here is V1 and over here is V2 and current flow this way. So therefore, I use V1 minus V2 divided by 4. That will be my current that flow over here. So basically, this is where I actually obtain the result. So basically, I put all the common factor okay, on one side. So before I can put all the common factor, okay, I need to put this. This will be V1 over 4 minus V2 over 4. So over here, I can see a common factor. So basically, I add them together. They become 3V1 over 4 and over here become minus V2 over 4. Correct. So what I need to do is basically, I can do a quick comparison from this first equation. Can you see here, this first equation compare over here. Okay, I can see that this is I1 term. Okay, I have V1 term over here and I have this V2 term over here. So from here, I can conclude that my Y11 is actually 3 over 4. Quite, if you compare term by term, this is V1, this is I1. Okay, I actually have Y11, which is 3 over 4. As for Y12, can okay, you compare these two terms here? Okay, I will be able to know that Y12 is equal to minus 1 over 4. So this is how I actually obtain the first pair of Y parameters over here. Next, okay, I apply Kirchhoff current law basically at this node 2 here. So basically, I2 okay, and plus this current that flow inside will be equal to the current that flow out here. Do you agree? I2 plus the current over here will be equals to this current here. Okay, so therefore how I do this, so basically I have this I2 here. Again, how to find the current flow here will be V1 minus V2 divided by 4, which I have illustrated on the previous page here. And this current here simply is V2 divided by 8, which is illustrated here. Okay, again, I try to group everything nicely. Okay, I know that this will be I2. Okay, so I regroup them together. So basically, I move this term onto the right. So what I have is basically this thing will become minus this whole thing here. So basically, it's minus V1 minus V2 over 4. Okay, I open up the bracket here. So basically, first term, I have a minus V1 over 4, which is here. Correct. So next is basically, I have this uh, V2 over 8. And because of minus, minus, they become positive. Correct. So basically, I have actually 3 volt over 8 here. Okay, so I do a quick comparison on the second equation here. Can you see here? Okay, I can see that they are exactly the same. I have this V1 term. I have this V2 term, which is here. And I have this I2 term. So from here again, I can conclude that Y21 is equal to minus 1 over 4. Okay, Y22, which is 3 over 8. So therefore, I successfully find another pair of Y parameters. So after I done all this, I actually can put one page here to show the Y parameters. So this is the equation. Okay, so this Y11, Y12, Y21, and Y22 will be the number that I found earlier on. So this is Y11, Y12, 3 over 4 minus 1 over quarter, okay, which is illustrated here. So this Y21 and Y12 minus 1 over 4, 3 over 8. Okay, again, is illustrated here. So from here, I actually successfully find the Y or admittance parameters. Okay, with this, I'd like to end my discussion. Please sub to like and subscribe. Once again, thank you so much for your strong support. I hope to see you guys soon. See you. Bye-bye.